What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be diving into basic routing in Laravel. Quick pause. Do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits just as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. We've talked about routes a little bit in the controllers episode and we've only talked about the get route method since this is the most common one. Let's navigate back to the web.php file right here and let's remove this common block that we have. Next to the get route method, Laravel provides six more options that you could use. We obviously got the get route, which will be used to either get a resource or multiple. So it will request a resource. And excuse me, typing and talking is pretty difficult. Then we got the second most common HTTP method, which is the post method. And the post method is mainly used whenever you want to create a new resource. So simply a new row inside your database. Then we got the put method, which is used whenever you want to update a resource. We've got the patch method, which is used to modify a resource. Wait, why do put and patch perform the same operation? With the put request, you're going to modify every single value inside that single row, while the patch method only modifies the values that have been changed. Then we got the delete method, and as the name implies, this will delete a resource, so a single row. Finally, we got the options method, which will ask the server which verbs are allowed at the given URI. And this is actually not one that we will be using, but it's good to know that it does exist. Now I've got a route defined right here that I commented out, which will get one single resource. And let's actually comment out the resource route that I have as well. Whenever you want to grab all blocks from the database, you will be performing the get request to the forward slash block endpoint. So get request. But when it comes to block posts, you also want to show a user one single post, right? A user can click on a post in a complete list of posts where information about a specific post is visible. So let's duplicate our route. And whenever you want to request one specific post, you need to request the block forward slash a unique value that represents that specific post. In our case, let's just say one. So we're accessing one specific post where the ID is one. Now this will not be visible inside the index method, but it will be inside the show method that shows information about one specific post. Now let's duplicate this line two more times. So where we're going to perform the post request. The first one is the get request, obviously which will show the forward slash blog forward slash create page. So the actual form for the user, and that's a typo, excuse me, inside the show method. Now the create method will be visible inside the create method inside our controller. And once a user submits the form where the input fields have been entered, it will be redirected to the forward slash blog endpoint, but we're not going to perform a get request, but a post request inside the store method. So it will be stored inside the database. Now the same format needs to be performed. So let's copy paste it when you want to update something. So either a put or patch. First, we need to get one single post to the forward slash blog, forward slash edit, forward slash the specific ID. In our case, it's one for now. And we're going to call the edit method. Then we need to request the actual update, which will be done inside the patch method, where we are going to update once again, one specific block. So forward slash block, forward slash one inside the update method. Finally, we got our delete method. So let's copy this line. Let's say delete, which will have the HTTP method of delete. Once again, we're going to delete on one specific ID where the method inside our post controller will be destroy. Now all these routes that I just defined right here will be handled inside the resource method. Now let's say that you've got a route that accesses multiple HTTP methods. So a post and a get request. Laravel got two methods on how you can handle that. So let me add a new comment, which says multiple HTTP verbs. The first one is calling our route. Instead of saying get or post, we're going to say match. The match accepts three parameters. The first one is an array, so brackets, 
where we need to define the HTTP verbs you'd like to check. So in single quotes, get, comma, post. Then we need to define our endpoint, so right after our array, forward slash, block, another parameter, because we need to define, once again, the controller, which will be post controller, colon, colon, class, comma, and a method will be index. Unlike the post, put, and patch, we can actually test this out inside the browser, but we do have to comment out all the other routes that we have for a second. So let's do that. Save it, and let's navigate back to the browser, go to our forward slash blog endpoint, and as you can see, it's still visible. Let's undo what we just did, and let me show you the second method. So let's comment out our route, and what we can do is create another route, colon, colon, and the HTTP verb that we're going to add is any. Now the any method accepts two parameters because we're not going to define HTTP verbs ourselves because it can be obviously any. So the endpoint is forward slash blog, comma, the method is post controller, the controller is the post controller, colon, colon, class, and the method will be index. Save it, and let's actually comment it out one more time. Navigate back to the browser, refresh it, and it's still visible. Let's undo what we just did and let's comment out this line. Before I wrap up the video, I want to show you the last method that you can use. And that's used whenever you don't need to look for a controller, but simply want to pass in a view. So let's define a new comment where we're simply going to return a view. Then we're going to define a route, colon, colon. And the method that we're going to use right here is the view method. Inside the view method, we need to pass in two required parameters. And the third one is optional. The first one is the URI, so let's say forward slash blog, comma. Then we got to define the view without the extension. In our case, let's say blog.index. Let's save it. Let's navigate back to the browser, refresh it. And as you could see, the page is still visible. Like I've said, there is an additional parameter that you can pass in, which is an array of the data. So right after our view, let's add a comma, brackets, where we're going to define a key value pair. The key, in our case, will be name, while the value is code with Dari. Now let's open our index.blade.php file inside the block folder, right below our h1, create blade snippets, and say dollar sign $name. If we navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that code with Dari has been printed out. Now before I wrap up the video, let's clean up our code a little bit. First, we're going to remove our dollar sign $name variable inside our index. Let's close it off. Now inside the web.php file, we're not going to use the view method, so let's comment it out. All right, and let's pull the resource route up to the top because we will be using that later on as well, and the invoke method as well. Now this was it for this short video where I showed you all HTTP verbs and some additional HTTP methods that you can use on your routes. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.